as someone who has so far this week forgotten to call my mum back, put out the recycling or eat anything green, I have plenty of guilt going on here in the real world. Therefore the last thing I need is a video game to try and juice me for extra guilt as I go about my in-game business. Yet here we are with all these games finding new and ingenious ways to make me feel terrible for doing in-game things that are mostly barely evil at all. Mostly. Join us now for seven guilt-inducing details that made us feel bad for being bad. And uh, oh, oh, that's my mum calling now. Oh no, ah, right in the conscience. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus. <laughs> I won't have it, no. As a wise man once sang, it's the circle of life that moves us all. Nowhere is this truer than in the Old West wilderness of Red Dead Redemption 2, where I murder some animals and am, in turn, murdered by other animals. Circle of life. You might then assume it's fair game to hunt and kill wolves, not only on account of their long-standing accord with Count Dracula, or me needing their pelts to support the gang back at camp, but because of the many, many times they've mauled me unto death. And it moves us all. But these man-eating wolves are not apparently fair game because Red Dead Redemption 2 has arranged it so that if you kill a single wolf that's part of a pack, you might later discover another wolf sat next to that lupine corpse, mourning the dead wolf with the kind of bereft sorrow I reserve for cartoon lion dads. Maybe the wolf you killed was its father, or its mother. Maybe they'd just started dating and weren't putting labels on anything yet. It's enough to make you very sorry that you shot it in the face with a rifle. Hey, at least I didn't flay its skin off, in which case no one would be sticking around for this open casket wolf funeral. You are welcome. The Witch of Isolith and her Daughters of Chaos. If you played Dark Souls, you'll almost certainly remember Quaylag, who at first appears to be a sexy lady, but uh-oh, it's revealed that from the waist down, she's a horrifying spider. So like a mermaid, but much, 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 much worse. In order to progress through the game and ring the second bell of awakening, you do have to kill Quaylag. Which is fine, because when you end up in her arena, it's a real kill or be killed by a horrifying lava spewing spider sort of situation. There is literally no reason at all to feel guilty about this. I mean, it's not like you could have solved the situation non-lethally. There isn't a glass and paper big enough in the world. So off you trot to ring the bell, but if you nip through an illusory wall in the buried bell tower, you'll come across the tragic sight of Quaylag's sister, who is similarly half woman, half spider, but is weak, blind, and seemingly mute. Only she's not mute. You just can't understand her unless you're wearing an item called the Old Witch's Ring. The wrinkle is, you're only likely to have this ring in your possession at this point if you chose it as your starting gift at the very beginning of the game. And with a description that says it is seemingly useless, I'll be honest, it's not terribly tempting. I mean, did you even see the black firebombs? The description says they're more deadly than a standard bomb. More deadly! If you do have the ring in your possession, you'll immediately be able to understand Quaylag's sister. And given that the only person who normally understands her is her sister Quaylag, she thinks you're Quaylag. Well, this is awkward. It gets worse though. She goes on to say that while she's in pain, she'll be okay as long as her sister is with her. That'll be the sister you just killed and are now impersonating. Well, I hope you're proud of yourself. You're the worst thing to happen to spiders since the invention of the bathtub. <laughs> if 
if you ever thought that reading minds would be cool and fun, like being Jean Grey off of the X-Men, then uh, here's Hollow Knight to tell you that it would actually be bad and regrettable, like being Jean Grey off of Dark Phoenix. Because when you acquire the sacred weapon known as the Dream Nail, which grants you access to the Dream Realm, you also gain the ability to read the thoughts of those around you. In a game with a vibe as poignant and melancholy as Hollow Knight, reading a character's thoughts means peeling back even more melancholy layers, revealing their rich inner lives like a sad onion. Even among the ten a penny corpses littering the game world, each seems to have its own heartbreaking backstory, hinted at by the revelations of the Dream Nail. You might have hoped that the boss named Dung Defender, known in the Dream Realm as the White Defender, would be exempt from tear-jerking insights on account of being one, so adorably cheerful, and two, pelting you with big balls of dung. Doma, 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 doma. <laughs> But no, it turns out that the most bittersweet and guilt-inducing of all the Dream Nail's insights comes from this boss, whose inner monologue upon being defeated recalls the noble oath he made to his now-fallen kingdom and his much-loved friends, the other great knights, who are dead. <laughs> to be honest, I felt better when you were throwing dung balls at me. For years, Diana was my sole handler at the agency. She supplied information and secrecy, and I sold perfection. Before the brilliant recent Hitman games, there was Hitman Absolution, which sounds less like a game and more like a product you rub on your stomach to get a six pack. I mean, 47 is pretty cut, so it would explain a lot. Hitman Absolution's tutorial level tasks you as Agent 47 with tracking down and killing your long-standing handler and agency contact Diana Burnwood, a woman with whom you've had many years of friendship. One day, I will think of this as just another job. And yet somehow shooting the one friend you have in the world while she's defenceless in the shower isn't the most guilt-inducing thing in that level. Wait. I know. That accolade is reserved for this moment earlier in the level. Now, normally we wouldn't think twice about stabbing, shooting or exploding entire armies of hired goons in Hitman levels, but this particular hired goon is taking an important phone call by a window next to a sheer drop. It's not prostate cancer. <laughs> I could kiss you. I mean, that's great news. Oh man, you made my day. Yeah, thanks Doc. Oh, come on. Look, the prompt to pull him out of the window to his doom is right there. The game's practically instructing me to do it. The difference between this and the other entries on this list is that it ladles on the guilt before you've even done the bad thing. And there is always the option to just wait until the guard walks away from the window, allowing you to infiltrate without killing him. You are now inside the mansion. But, let me just offer a counter-argument. It's really funny watching one of these guys ragdoll down a cliff face. Woo! Man, no one can piss on this day. Yes, I feel guilty, but you know what else I feel? Amused. Also hungry. And a little bit sleepy. We've all done things we're not proud of, but making a cat weep has got to be the least braggable accomplishment of all time. And it's only possible in Monster Hunter. By cat, of course I mean Palico, the feline companions of the Monster Hunter series, which are like real-world cats, but better in that they can wear adorable Whittle outfits and cook delicious meals. Whereas in the real world I can barely get a cat to acknowledge my existence, much less cook me dinner and put on clothes. Did I mention that Palicos also do Street Fighter cosplay? Fight. More like blank R. Anyway, in Monster Hunter Generations and Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, you can recruit a sweet Palico baby to be your furry sidekick and appoint them to your Palico team for the mini game named Meowster Hunter. Incredible. But also, I'm afraid you can send them packing if you no longer require their presence. 
You can do that, but be warned your heart will never heal from the sight of your feline buddy dejectedly receiving its marching orders, then crying its eyes out while riding off on an alpaca. Wow, I sure don't feel good about that. The equivalent interaction in Monster Hunter Portable features a weeping cat digging what I hope isn't its own grave, and in Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, your sad former friend appears to be ascending to cat heaven like a dearly departed childhood pet. Yeah, let's just agree to keep all palicos forever, no matter what. Final Fantasy Tactics on the PS1 is the game that taught me that the bit of Final Fantasy games I'm good at is clicking through conversations, and the bit I'm bad at is everything that's an actual video game. With a much heavier focus on tactical combat, Final Fantasy Tactics was an impressive blend of isometric 3D battlefields and 2D character sprites. Taking place during a war called the War of Lions, it challenged you with traditional Final Fantasy turn-based combat, but with the added twist of having to position your units so that they're the most tactically effective in combat that they can be. I'm actually a four-star general. Unfortunately, the four stars are my uber rating. Of course, Final Fantasy Tactics may be a spin-off, but it wouldn't be a Final Fantasy game if there wasn't a story full of characters with brilliant fantasy names like Ramza Beowulf, Alphonse Draklau, and Goffard Gafgarian. That one's just fun to say. Goffard Gafgarian. Try it. Goffard Gafgarian. Hmm. Anyway, the point is, this series is all about storytelling, so the members of your squad aren't just nameless, faceless units. They've all got individual identities, unique names, and cute profile pictures, ensuring that you become properly attached to your little crew. The only problem with that is, when it starts to get a little cramped in the barracks, and you have to fire somebody from your squad, they really crank up the guilt trip. Uh, no, I don't just dump people like that. Wait, have you been speaking to my ex-girlfriend? Lower level characters just sound sad and wounded when you attempt to do a bit of restructuring, but wait until you try and lay off one of the characters you've leveled up to a high level and they give you an absolute earful. What these soldiers don't seem to understand is what a fundamentally dreadful tactician I am, and that by removing them from my squad, I'm doing them a favour, because I'm increasing their chances of survival by approximately 400%. I'm saving you from yourself. Myself. Whatever. Coaster is a management sim about roller coasters rather than a role playing game about the emotional burden of being the boss. And so you would expect to be hiring and firing team members as the business demands, keeping wage costs affordable and the park adequately staffed, without a second thought as to the humanity or personal lives of your employees. I mean, someone's got to clean up the vomit, and it ain't gonna be me. But if you're paying attention, then each time you fire one of your park staff is a tiny, conscience-twinging guilt trip. <laughs> As you watch that little disappointed employee walk miserably to the exit of your park, probably wondering how they're going to pay the rent and support their family. And there's no waiting around for the guilt after you let someone go. <laughs> Because apparently, in this workplace, the contractual notice period is the time between you pressing the button that fires them, and them being fired. 
And I hope that the ex-employee wasn't looking forward to an office farewell party, because the closest that they're going to get is stepping in rainbow-coloured vomit between the ice cream stand and the park's newest, most nauseating coaster. You couldn't clean that up on your way out, could you? Thanks. Well, here we are at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, but I can't believe that you're not going to click on either of these videos up here. I can't believe you do that to us. This one up here about really gross stuff that people worship for some reason. Or this one down here about weird ass karting games. We worked really hard on We them. worked so hard. We're really. not angry. We're just disappointed. We're just disappointed. Thank you for watching.